This is a Squiz podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squiz Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Good morning and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Thursday, August 4. In Squiz Kids Today, wet summer on the cards. Trouble brewing in Taiwan. Operation Cheetah has liftoff and playing ball with the king. That's what's making news, kids style. The Lowdown. Just when you thought it was safe to pack away the umbrella and put the gum boots back into storage, comes news yesterday that the wet weather that's been battering much of the country for the past eight to ten months may not be finished with us yet. I know, right? How much rain can one country bear? Meteorologists, who are people who study weather patterns and tell us what the weather's going to be like in the days, weeks and months ahead, yesterday warned that thanks to a weather phenomenon called a negative Indian Ocean dipole, we may need to brace ourselves for a wet spring. Spring, of course, in our fair nation happens in September, October and November. And in other exciting news, not La Nina, the weather phenomenon that made the last two summers so soggy, has a 50-50 chance of returning this coming summer. Now, apart from ruining my beach holiday plans and making people who own ice cream shops or operate places like Wet n Wild very sad, a wet summer could be a problem from a flooding point of view. Because we've had no fewer than four major rain events along the east coast since February, huge swathes of the country are saturated. Dams and rivers are full, and if more rain falls, it won't take much for flooding to occur again. That's it. I'm moving to the desert. Spin the globe. Each day we give the World Globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in Taiwan, where tensions are running high after one of America's most senior politicians touched down in the capital, Taipei. Chinese fighter jets were deployed, Chinese battleships conducted drills in waters surrounding the island of Taiwan, and Chinese officials issued stern statements criticising the United States for meddling where it wasn't welcome. So, why such a dramatic reaction from China to a simple visit by a US politician? Because while Taiwan says it's an independent nation, China claims that Taiwan is in fact a part of China. Many people in Taiwan have no interest in being a part of China, and the visit by a senior US politician is being seen as the United States taking Taiwan's side over China's. It's what we call geopolitics, my friends. So, now you know. You're welcome. Sport time! Yes, OK, the Commonwealth Games are happening and Australia is winning all the precious metal medals. And swimmer Emma McKeon has become the most successful Commonwealth Games athlete in the history of ever, which is amazing. But today, we're going to get into the Squiz Kids time machine and head back to ancient Mexico, to the time of the Maya, the civilization that dominated Mexico and Central America before the Spanish arrived in the 16th century. So why are we doing that? Because archaeologists have just announced that they've made an important discovery about the game of pelota, a sport played by the Maya with a heavy rubber ball on a rectangular court. Excavation of the Toniña ruins in Mexico have revealed that the ashes of dead Mayan rulers were very likely mixed into those balls. The archaeologists in charge think that the Maya wanted their rulers to live on in sport, and so they mixed their ashes with the rubber used to make the balls. Just imagine having a hit around with the remains of your king. Animal Kingdom And so to India, where a plan 13 years in the making will finally come to fruition next week, when a group of cheetahs flies from Africa to their new home in India. 
But they're not going to a zoo. They're going to live wild and free in an Indian national park. The complicated operation to relocate them will be the first time a large carnivore has been moved from one continent to another and reintroduced to the wild. Now, I say reintroduced because the world's fastest land animals did once live in India, but went extinct more than 50 years ago. Wildlife experts in India started planning to bring cheetahs back to the country way back in 2009. The young cheetahs will next week fly on a cargo plane from Johannesburg in South Africa to Delhi in India. Once they get to the Kuno National Park, they'll be kept in a 700 square kilometre enclosure for a month because it takes that long for a cheetah to lose the impulse to walk back to where they came from, which in this case would be pretty tricky. For photos of the cheetahs and to read more about this complex operation, check out the link in your episode notes. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. What's the name of the Asian country which is the scene this week of high tension between the United States and China? Yes, that's right, it's Taiwan. Question number two. Which Aussie swimmer has become the most successful athlete in Commonwealth Games history? You got it, it's Emma McKeon. Question number three. What sort of animals are being reintroduced to the wild in India? Yeah, that's right, they're cheetahs. Shout outs. It's August 4. Today is National Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Children's Day. And it's also pop singer Jessica Malboy's birthday. Happy birthday, Jess. It's also a special day for these squiz kids celebrating a birthday today. Adelph from Ivanhoe, Bethia from Sydney, Sam from Kempsey, Pacey from Bungendore, Will from Hilltop, Lily from Kapalabar, Gordon from Altona Meadows, Jackson from Ashton Field and Chloe from Innisfail. And classroom shout outs today go to grade six at Pullen Vale State School with Mrs Rudd and Ms Stevens. Class F2 at Hammond Park Primary School, Class 6B at Umundi State School, Mr White at St Pius X Primary School in West Warrnambool, and finally to Mrs Kennedy and Mr Frost and their fabulous Year 5-6 class at St Rita's Primary School in South Johnston. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out or if you're after a classroom shout-out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out. 